Hello there everyone and welcome to another edition of Lydia's Crafty Corner with me Lydia in my Crafty Corner. So today I'm going to be working with the very new and a very beautiful crafter flower daisy. Now in this one I wanted to create more of a white looking daisy so instead of using coloured cardstock I'm going to show you how you can use any coloured cardstock and use your inks to colour them. So as I said before I am going to be using the crafter flower daisy. Now this is a layering die set so you're going to get all the dies in there and you also do have the layering guide at the bottom to help you pop them together. So as I said before I'm not going to be using coloured cardstock, I am in fact just going to be using white cardstock and then we can colour these later on. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to take all of the dies from the die set and I'm going to cut these out of white cardstock. Now I do cut a number of the leaves and only one of each of the flowers just so I can create my arrangement at the end. So once I have all of my images die cut I can then start to play with them. So I'm going to keep the waste piece. Now this is what I am using to use as a guide. This is going to help when I'm doing my blending so all of the little pieces or the um, straggly bits on the dies don't um, bend and bow when I am doing them. So I'm just going to add a little bit of glue tape behind the little negative piece and I'm just going to add a little bit behind the pieces that I'm going to be doing the ink blending on too as well. So I am using the Altenew Tape Glue. This is a really great one and you can take a little bit of extra stick off with your fingers if you want. So for the third layer of the leaves I am going to be using the beautiful Moss from Altenew. This is one of my favourite greens. I just love this olivey colour. I'm then going to move on to the second layer of the leaves. Now I'm going to do the, exactly the same colours for both sets of the leaves. So that's the one that's got a single leaf and then the little cluster of two as well. So for the second layer of the leaves I'm going to be using the olive ink. Now this is again from the Tropical Forest Ink Collection so if you have the cubes it's exactly the same as if you do have the ovals. So I'm just going to ink blend that one. I'm then going to move on to the solid pieces. Now this is the base layer and for this one I'm going to be using the parrot ink. So as you can see I'm just using the same ink blender for each of these three colours. Because they're the same colour, uh, just in a little bit of a different tone, I don't worry too much about cleaning my little blending tool off after each one. So as you can see I'm just using that little guide that we cut from the dies from, so the little negative piece, and I'm using that to pop my little images in so I can ink blend them without them bending. Once I have finished with all of my leaf layers I'm then going to move on to my flowers. So I have the base part of the flowers, so this is the bottom piece and what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little tiny bit of baby pink around the outside. You know like daisies sometimes they can have that really pink edge and that's the kind of a look that I want to go for. I want a kind of a white flower with the beautiful pink on the edges. So I'm using baby pink for that one. I then want to add a little bit of a shadow in the center of here. So I'm just going to use amethyst. You could use a gray if you wanted to but I think with a purple it adds a little bit more of a softness to that shadow. So once I have that one done I'm then going to pop my second base into the um, a little die cut that we have there. I'm going to remove this. If you are struggling a little bit it does help to have a little pin just to poke that out. I'm going to do this one in exactly the same way. So I'm adding that baby pink ink just around the outside edge and then a little bit of that beautiful amethyst into the center to add my shadow. It doesn't matter if your blending isn't great because most of it will be covered with the second layer. I'm then going to move on to the second layer so I'm going to add those into my negative spaces. I'm going to remove one of them because I don't want to get any ink on that one and I'm just going to use the same colors as I did before. So I'm adding that amethyst ink just to the centerpiece there. Once I have enough on that I will then move on and add some ink around the edges of these petals. As before I will be using the baby pink for this as well. Adding this onto a piece of scrap paper really does help so you can move your image around rather than having to get your um, wrist into an awkward angle. So once I have those pieces done for the, the top layer of the first flower I'm then going to remove the pieces and then add the piece back in for the second layer of the second one and then do that in exactly the same. I'm then going to take the center pieces and I'm just going to again I'm going to pop them into the negative space on the die cut that we've already done 
And for this, the bottom layer of the beautiful centers, I'm using the pumpkin pie ink. I'm just going to add this on with a blending tool. I don't have an alt new blending tool for this color, so I'm just going to use one of my old ones. And I'm then going to add the second layer from the for the little centers into place into the little die cut this time. So I'm just going to pop those in. And then for this one, I'm going to be using the yellow ochre ink. Again, I'm using that same blending tool just to add color onto those white die cuts. So once that has been done, I can then move ahead and I can adhere all of my pieces together. Now you do have the guide on the bottom of your die set, so you can refer to that if you need to. But I find that these are really easy to um, stick together. Once you've done it once or twice, I don't think you're gonna need the guide then. Also for these centers, I don't think they need to be perfect and you can mix and match the centers with the different floral images as well. So don't worry too much about getting the right center for the right flower. They both work for each of the flowers. So I'm then, once I've done the centers, I'm then gonna move on to the flower layers. As you can see, I'm just using my old new tape glue for this. You could use whatever glue you wanted, but I do find that this works perfectly. So you can see I've just popped one of the centers in there. I didn't worry too much if it was the right one. I just popped it in, it works. So once those are done, I'm then gonna move on to the leaves. Now exactly the same as before. You can use the guide if you want to, but I'm just gonna pop these in. They do work really, really easily. Um, there are The little pieces are maybe a little bit fiddly, but you can use a pin to help you out with that. So once I have all of my layers popped together, I'm then gonna move on to assembling my card. So I have a card base here. I have a piece of white and black striped paper from the Essential 6x6 paper pack. I'm gonna add that just down one of the sides of the card base using some glue tape. I'm gonna remove the excess from the back. I'm then gonna add my flowers into place. Now these are the focal images, so I want these to pop up a little bit. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of foam tape behind those. And then for the leaves, I'm just gonna add those in, tucking them behind the flowers using some old new tape glue. Now, having the flowers popped up on some foam tape and the leaves behind, I think adds a little bit of added dimension that way as well. Now with this tape glue, if you don't push your images down um, straight away, you can remove them and then push it down and then it's gonna be nice and firm that way. I have a sentiment from the Sentiment Strips 2 stamp set and I have stamped that onto some jet black cardstock with some embossing ink and then heat set that using some pure white embossing powder. And here is the card complete. I have to say I really do like how this turned out. I could have used a little bit um, less of that pink ink to give me more of a white flower but I do like how it turned out in the end. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again soon. Bye bye. Hello there crafty friend, Lydia here. Just popping in to say that you can get your daily dose of crafting tips, techniques, and tutorials just like this by subscribing to the Altenew YouTube channel. All you need to do is click on that little bell up there and you will never miss a video. Thanks for watching, bye bye.